morning and welcome to uh, Advent Mornings Together. It's a time when we'll share in scripture and thought and prayer. We'll spend a little bit of time settling our souls, uh, paying attention to the Word of God, to the idea of God's uh, advent, His incarnation, uh, the waiting before Him, and we'll seek God for awakening. The Holy Spirit is the old uh, King James expression used to be that our spirits would be quickened, that they would be awakened, that we'd have time to engage with God um, and ask Him for alertness in body, soul, and spirit. <clears throat> Let's take a moment and uh, pray. Father, we lift ourselves to you this morning. We want to be attentive to your ways, to your person. I declare that God is a triune God. You've revealed yourself in three persons, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And in your mercy, you have given us life. You created us from nothing. We exist. We have personalities. Our being is at your pleasure. And we thank you for that. Not only have you created us, but you have intervened and you have come into our world. You have become a human being in the person of Jesus and you've shared life and you've shared your life with us and given us access to your spirit, to your ways, to your kingdom, to eternity. We thank you and we tell you we want to grow more in our understanding of your ways, your ancient paths. So, Holy Spirit, wake us up, we pray in the name of Jesus. Wake us up. Wake us up and make us alert to the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, my name is Tom Griffith, and we're in the Boston area. Uh, if you like anything that I share, feel free to uh, tap some hearts or to uh, swipe your screen from left to right and forward this maybe to somebody else that they'd know a little bit about it. Um, the Advent season is a time of longing, a time where we get in touch with the desires of our heart. We bring them before God with a kind of anticipatory uh, waiting uh, learning to be still and wait upon the Lord, to put our hope in the Lord. So this is a time we bring our attention. Thank you for the encouragement. We bring our attention to uh, God. <clears throat> and it's a really good season to learn and to practice uh, three disciplines. Talked about it a little bit yesterday of si uh, solitude, getting alone, getting away from distractions, uh, silence is turning off uh, the input and the output, getting away from the many words and many images. So just uh, practicing silence and ultimately stilling ourselves, uh, getting to a place where we are simply beholding God. I know no better time of year uh, but besides Advent to practice that, partially because, you know, we're in the winter. We have these long periods of darkness, a great time to squirrel away and practice solitude, silence, and stillness. Um, <clears throat> when we come to the Lord, you and I have a tendency uh, to come to Him with our complaints, with our justifications, the ways that we see life and how things should be that they're not, even sometimes how God should be and He's not. Our own justifications in our mind. Sometimes we play out arguments with other people. It's funny how when we do that, uh, how uh, effective we are. You know, when, I, when I've imagined arguments or rehearsed arguments or planned arguments uh, in myself, in my silence, uh, when I plan those arguments with others, it seems like I'm always pretty witty and I tend to win. We come to God, often we bring ourselves, our complaints, our requests to God. We bring a lot of information, a lot of force His way. Well, this is not the ideal protocol for coming before God, but He knows our frame. And God, as, a, as an incredible Father, often allows us to punch ourselves out to just swing and he absorbs our complaints, our self-reference justifications and he lets us just wear ourselves out to a place where we come to stillness and silence. Sometimes it's a hollow place. I can remember one time uh, many years ago when some things had happened in life and some relationships and 
um, some people had left our ministry setting and I, I had been really weeping. I, w I was in a, a, a hard place. I was on the side of uh, our bed. I can remember no one at home but me. I had wept myself to that point where I was, uh, my head was hollow. I had no words left. I was just there with this just emptiness in my head and in my body and in my spirit, just sitting there. And the Lord spoke some brief yet powerful words into my spirit from nowhere. Nothing that I was considering, but words that have been effective uh, for me and been beneficial and uh, instructive for over 20 years. Um, let me share with you a passage from the book of Job. I, I, I love the layout of the book of Job. What a brutal uh, experience that he went through. And we have this book of 41 chapters that just goes on and on with people misjudging Job and Job in his pain and Job actually bringing his complaints, punching himself out before God, just justifying himself and uh, demanding, pleading with God to come down from heaven, that he wants to, to meet with God and share his case before God. Well, it's interesting as we come to the last part of Job, um, God does come down and Job is very quickly silenced in his own soul and realized that he's taken on a lion bigger than he realized. And uh, God continually says, Job, brace yourself like a man. I have something to say to you. And he keeps just coming toward Job. Uh, let me just read a couple short verses related to that concept. This is from Job 33, verses 31 through 33. It says, um, <clears throat> God speaking to Job, pay attention, Job, listen to me. Be silent, and I will speak. If you have anything to say, answer me. Speak up, for I want uh, to vindicate you. Speak up, I want to vindicate you. But if you don't have anything to say, listen to me. Be silent, and I will teach you wisdom. Often we come to the end of ourselves before we can ever be silent to receive God's wisdom. That's not the ideal protocol, but God knows your frame. I want to encourage you a few things. First, I want to encourage you to commit yourself to being with him. Sometimes you, it's going to take some time. You're going to need to get past yourself. You're going to get need to get past your many words, your many thoughts, your self-justifications and just be with him. So commit yourself to that and I do want to remind you of a better protocol. A better protocol comes from Psalm 100 that we enter his gates with thanksgiving, we enter his courts with praise. So as you still yourself, as you or practice solitude, you're getting away, a good start is to come before him with thanks. Thanks for what he's done, thanks for how he's been, thanks for how he's provided, thanks. And Directing, lifting your eyes to praise and declare who he is, that you are my God. And coming to a place of greater intimacy where you're now worshiping him and expressing your love to God. So we come with thanks and praise and worship. And we can come then to a place of silence where we're shutting out distractions. We're allowing his presence to uh, sink in, to settle upon our spirits. And ultimately, we can come to that place of silence and stillness where we're waiting with expectancy, and presenting ourselves, our hopes and our dreams, and we're ultimately just being still and being with God, knowing that in due time, in His timing, in the right moments, He will speak. We will know He is with us. Today, God wants to speak to you. Can you still your heart? Be still. Be silent. And I will teach you wisdom, says the Lord. May God give you a day where you see the movement of God, both outside and experience his movement inside. And when you hear from him, cooperate with him. Add obedience. Add faith to what you do. God wants to fill you today. Be full of him 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have an awesome day. Again, my name's Tom Griffith. I hope you have a great day, and uh, I will catch you tomorrow somewhere around 6 a.m. Bye-bye.